Having won the race for City Hall, Sadiq Khan has been officially sworn in as London's new mayor. Snatching back the post for Labour after eight years in the wilderness, his victory has been hailed by many as a shift in perspective for the British capital, something Khan was keen to emphasise. Good morning. My name is Sadiq Khan and I'm the Mayor of London. Great Britain, United Kingdom, my condolences. Your country is finished. I did not think this would happen so quickly. Me being an American over here on my side of the pond, I look at Europe and I see what's going on over there. And I'm concerned about it because what happens in Europe will eventually wash ashore to the U.S. Or what's going to happen. And what I'm talking about here before I get too deep into my introduction is the new mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. London, how did you elect a Muslim mayor? Don't you see what's going on here? Don't you like haven't you been paying attention? Take a look at this video clip. Now, if you had to guess where this location is, would you say Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq? This is London, England. You have to understand what's going on here. When these Muslims come to your country, they're not coming really to integrate. Now, I'm not going to say that with 100 percent accuracy and certainty because many Muslims do come to a new country and completely assimilate. You would never even really know where they came from outside of just their physical appearance. But there is a lot of them. I'm not going to say it's a majority or minority. It's not really important about the percentage. It's too many. They come to your country to simply bring whatever they had in the country they came from to your new place. And why did they come to your new place? Well, it's better living in London, England, where you have all kind of infrastructure that is top notch and beautiful. You got all kind of welfare programs. You can live for free, live like a king. Rather than being in some hot, arid desert with no water like in Pakistan or Afghanistan, right? It's a better living condition. This is why they don't go to Eastern European countries. This is why they want to go to places like Sweden, Denmark, France, Germany, UK, even Ireland. They want to go there because you have much more lush welfare systems, easier ways of living. And they don't want to come there to become a person that is of British ancestry. No, your rich history that you have in the United Kingdom. All of what you've gone through, Ireland, the same thing, all of what you've gone through, all of the fighting between Northern Ireland, all of the conflict, all of the history, all of the good and bad times. They're not interested in that. They're not interested in your monarchy. They're not interested in that. That does not concern them. What are they concerned about? They're concerned about getting welfare. They're concerned about getting free food, free education for their kids. And that's it. And when they come to your place, they're not going to respect it. They're going to set up their own neighborhoods. They're going to set up their own places of worship. They're going to behave how they want to behave. They're going to pray five times a day right in the center of the street and dare you do something about it. Right. See, before you elected a Muslim mayor, all you really had to protect Muslims was just them themselves, not really in political power. You did have some people in politics. Right. But this is a, a gradual thing. And I'm not even on the inside watching this. I'm on the outside looking in. I see what's going on with your country. Right. It was a gradual process. You got some people that may be in parliament that may be Muslim. You got certain representatives of a town or of a place of a Muslim community. And the bigger thing here is not even the Muslims themselves. It's the people that are of English ancestry and or the people that were already there in UK that not only allow this kind of behavior, but they encourage and promote it. Right. You got these liberals white guilty left-wing liberals in England, in Europe, that do things to protect Muslims. Prime example, what's the name of the day you have? The St. George's Day, you know, where they say you couldn't fly the flag of uh, of Britain. You couldn't fly the white flag with the red cross on it because it may offend some people. So you got people that, and the people that decided this were not even Muslims. They were Englanders, people that are ethnically British, Right. They're the ones that said, let's not fly the flag because we don't want to offend people. So what you're doing there is legitimizing the backwards behavior. You're also delegitimizing the people that want to become integrated, because if you want to become integrated, you should take that flag as yours. Right. It should be part of your country. You are an Englander. You are part of the UK. You should take that flag as is yours if you want to become integrated. But if you don't want to become integrated, you'll be offended. And the people that are on the left wing. They'll say, well, you should be offended. So you're, you're legitimizing the wrong behavior 
and delegitimizing the right behavior. And you're wondering why we have so many problems. You got the Pakistani gang rape situation and people want to kind of brush that under the rug. And then when you brush it under the rug, this is coming from the Muslims that have any kind of power, any kind of influence. And also the people that are non-Muslim, the white Englanders, the white people from UK, they want to push it under the rug. It was a documentary that was supposed to be made about the whole uh, Pakistani rape gangs. But during production, I'm not sure who did it or why they did it or what. Well, I know why they did it. I don't want to be naive. What happened was they had the movie. It was going to portray the gangs as what they were. Muslims from Asia, Pakistan, right? Because it's a big problem over there with the Pakistani rape gangs. What they do is they groom young kids, young girls, young white girls, you know, with trips and cars and money. They groom these young girls that don't understand any better. And then what they do is they end up raping these girls. Sometimes they kind of like push them into prostitution. That's what happens. And there's young white girls now. They don't do it to their own girls. That's haram, as they would say. That's forbidden. They don't do it to their own girls. They do it to the white girls from UK. Why? Because they're not interested in integration. They don't look at the white girls from UK as part of them. Even if they were born in UK, it doesn't matter because you got people that are Muslim and people that are not Muslim that both condone it. People that are not Muslim act like it's not happening. And back to this movie, it was supposed to be made with the portrayal of the Muslim rape gangs for what they were, exactly their racial type, their phenotype, their facial features, everything was supposed to be accurate. But what ended up happening was they switched them out for white Londoners, right? So you're completely missing the whole point of the movie and you're obfuscating the problem. And that's the whole problem with the situation that's going on right now. It's a series of events. You have unbridled immigration into your country, which is really an invasion. When people come into your country in mass and they don't integrate, that is called an invasion. When you have situations like this, where you have a hundred people marching down the street, speaking in Arabic in London, wearing their traditional Islamic garb, do you think that they will be integrated anytime soon or ever? And as long as people that are actually the ancestors of the people that founded the country allow that behavior, how will it ever stop? And then the final piece is placing Muslim people who are not integrated, who are extremists themselves, you put them into power, you're done. And the thing is, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the enablers, the white Europeans. I think what they think is that it's racist to say that Muslims should be integrated into society or anyone that comes into the country should be integrated. They think that it's racist to say that you should not wear a burqa out in public rather than it being a security risk, which it is. They are guilty about being white and being in a better position than many of them that come to their country are. And they think they're doing a good thing by saying, well, if you're Muslim, you come over here to this country and we'll treat you like, you know, you can just do whatever you want. You want to rape girls. You want to come over here. You want to burn our flag, throw it away. We're not going to fly our own flag just to please you. You can fly the ISIS flag in parliament chambers. That's fine. Do whatever you want to do because we don't want you to feel bad. And I think maybe they think they'll gain some favor. But these people, unless they become Muslim themselves, are not going to gain any favor. They're just being used. Right. They're still kafir. That means non-believer. It doesn't matter if you're black, white. It doesn't matter what you are. If you're not a Muslim, if you are not of them. They don't see you as the same as them. And if you're white, you're seen as definitely a big target because they know you're soft and they know that you are not the same as them. And there might even be some ancestral hate. Some of them may come from Pakistan, which was created as a result of the British leaving India. And there was a lot of bloodshed that happened there. So they may blame you and there may be some ancestral hate there. Right. Just like my man, I forget his name, talked about Obama saying that there may be some ancestral hate for the UK because of Kenya being formally colonized by the UK. It's the same thing going on here. These Pakistanis coming to your country, hating on you for what happened in the 40s and 50s, them leaving and then creating Pakistan, right? And all the bloodshed that happened in Lahore. That's what might be going on. They look at you as somebody that is to be despised and reviled. So when they come to your country, you have to understand they're not trying to be nice with you. They're trying to take advantage of your social structure, your infrastructure, your welfare, and that's it. And rape your women and do whatever else they want to do and run wild. And the people on the left are enabling it. And then they want to say people on the right are racist for not wanting that. How is it racist for wanting your country to remain what it is? And a Muslim mayor, that's kind of like the final nail in the coffin. 
Do you think that Israel would elect a Muslim president? Do you think that Benjamin Netanyahu would get ousted by a Muslim? Would never happen. Do you think that the Ayatollah Khomeini would get replaced by some white European? It would never happen. It does not make any sense for an Islamic country to elect a Christian or a white person, right? And same thing goes with the state of Israel. They're not going to elect a Muslim. They're not going to elect a black person. They're going to elect another Jew, right? A white Jew. They're not going to elect somebody that is not of them. But for some reason, the West wants to just elect whoever and swear a name on the Quran and all of that. And the same thing happened here, I think, in Brooklyn, New York, New York City. Um, it may be some type of council member or something like that. It was not the mayor, of course. That's Bill de Blasio, which is a whole different video. It was a woman, a black woman who was sworn in wearing a hijab and she swore her name on the Quran, the same as this guy Sadiq Khan did. Right. And I'm outraged at this. I'm like, yo, this is not you can't bring Islam into your place. And I'm not a person that's a racist or Islamophobe. I think you should be able to practice Islam. Sure. Do it in your country where it's accepted. Go to Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq, etc. There are a lot of countries that practice Islam. Go there and do that. But then when you invade another country that is not built upon Islam, that is not culturally prepared for Islam. And then when you take advantage of that and commit crimes in the name of Islam as a shield to protect what you're doing, that's when I got a problem. And I also got a problem when those kind of behaviors present themselves in Western culture in general. It's not going to just stay localized to Germany, to France, to Sweden, to UK, to anywhere in Western Europe. It's not going to stay localized there. Like I say, it's going to cross the Atlantic Ocean. It's going to cross that pond and it's going to affect New York, Washington, D.C. And really, it is already hit Washington, D.C. because Barack Hussein Obama. Right. And I saw him get on stage a couple of times and talk about, well, the Holy Quran teaches us the, the way he said that that's reminiscent of Louis Farrakhan, who, by the way, Sadiq Khan actually defended when he was banned from coming to the UK for saying that he wanted to kill whites and Jews. Right. So keep that in mind. Sadiq Khan also called moderate Muslims Uncle Tom's. So when you're talking about, oh, Muslims are moderate. There's a lot of moderate Muslims. The extremists are the select few. Well, look, the mayor of London, Great Britannistan has said that the moderate Muslims are their bad people. They're Uncle Tom's. If you don't know what that means, that means like a traitor to your own race, Uncle Tom. And I was surprised to hear him say that because that's a term that's been that was originated over here in the U.S. Like I say, things cross the pond. I was surprised to hear him say that. And if you don't believe that he said that, I have the video in the box below. You can check it out and see it for yourself. He said that right about moderate Muslims. And I got more information in the description box below that tells you a lot more about Sadiq Khan and his background. But all of that is just extra. All that is really important right here is the fact that you got a Muslim mayor in a city, in a country that has been invaded over the past few years by Islam. There are some neighborhoods where it's completely Islamic, where it's completely Muslim. They have their own culture and they're not integrating. The only thing that's been integrated is the language. They speak English and that's it. That is all. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it doesn't look good for London. London most certainly has fallen. Hopefully it has not fallen forever. So what do you think? Do you think this was a good idea to let a Muslim to be the mayor of London? Does it promote inclusion or does it promote exclusion? If you have a Muslim who is not a person that is going to be inclusive to others who will put Muslims first in any kind of conflict that arises. If a person does not want to have a mosque blaring prayer five times a day outside of their house. And it comes down to a conflict between the Muslims of the community and the regular white Europeans or other groups that are not Muslim. Who's going to win that when you have Muslims in parliament, Muslim representatives of the community, a majority Muslim neighborhood and a Muslim mayor and a left leaning government in general that will condone everything that the Muslims do. And they will not condone anything that the people that are not Muslims do. If it offends the Muslims, you tell me your thoughts. That's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share and subscribe. Peace.